Hello students. Let us recap the chapter 1 before we discuss chapter 2. Chapter 1, reproduction in organism, you have learnt about reproduction, then types of reproduction, sexual, asexual reproduction and the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction you have learnt. Today, we are going to discuss about the chapter 2, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. What is the other name of flowering plants you have already learnt? Other name of flowering plants is angiosperm. Now, if you see the plant, mainly there are two parts. There are various parts of the plant, but the plant is mainly categorized in two. One is vegetative part, the other one is reproductive part. Mostly the vegetative parts are used as asexual reproduction. But the reproductive part of the plant is flower. So in the previous class itself, you all have learned about the structure of flower. Flower is the reproductive part and the flower is attached to the inflorescence by the stalk-like structure that is pedicel. The flower is made up of four accessory holes. What are the four accessory holes? Calyx, Corella, Andricium and Gynecium. Now the uh, outermost accessory hole is made up of sepals, the green color one. This is known as sepals made up of this hole is known as calyx. The next second accessory hole is petal is known as corolla. The third accessory part is stamens together we call it as andricium. You can see this. These are the filaments. The fourth accessory hole is Carpels or pistil, you can see here, which is coming out, this part, this is gynecium, yeah, female reproductive part. So, now you have learned the four accessory holes, the outermost sepal, second is petal, third andricium and fourth one is gynecium. So, now what is the function of this sepals, they are green in color. They protect the buds when it is in young stage. Then second one is it is colorful. The petals, they attract pollinators, help in pollination. The third accessory part, they are stamens you can see. They produce the male reproductive gametes, pollen grains. The fourth the part is coming out. The fourth accessory part is that is gynecium. That is gynecium. It produces female reproductive unit. All these four uh, flower holes are arranged in a disc like structure. I am just showing uh, that here you can find that. Yes. Disc like structure, what it is called, that is. Thalamus or receptacle. Now, the male reproductive part or uh, andricium, what we call it as the stamens together, they are known as andricium. The whole, there are four stamens in this flower, and this together, these stamens are known as andricium. The stamen, which consists of two parts, mainly two parts. The slender tube-like structure that is filament and the top you can see the yellow color that is anther. So the two parts of the male reproductive unit is uh, uh, filament and anther together made up of stamen. Now you are going to study about the detailed structure of anther. 
Now you will see about the cross section of the anther. What we call it as the anther is made up of two lobes. Each lobe is divided by a connective tissue and each lobe has two theca. That theca is separated by a septum. Now anther is tetragonal. Tetragonal means it is four lobe. The anther is four lobe tetragonal in nature. Each one contains four. Each side of the lobes contain two uh, microsporangia. So totally four microsporangia are found in the anther. Now if you see the cross section of the, if you take the cross section of anther, you will find four different layers. What are the four different layers? The outermost layer is epidermis. The second layer which is thick wall that is endodermis. The third layer which is made up of one, two, three layer cell thickness that is known as middle layer. The fourth layer is made up of dead cytoplasm that is tapetum. Inside the tapetum you can find the cells they are known as sporogenous tissue. They are the one to produce the male gametes. The anther lobes are connected in between the connective tissue. Now let us see what are the functions of these four layers. Epidermis, endodermis and middle layer these three together protect you in nature. Then tapetum it gives nourishment for the pollen grains. When the pollen grains grow it gives nourishment to the when the sporogenous tissue undergo division and it produce pollen grains. So these tapetal cells provide nutrition for the growing, uh, growing pollen grains. Next, what is microsporogenesis? How the sporogenous tissue produce pollen grains? Microsporogenesis is a process. The production of pollen grains from microspore mother cell or the process of formation of microspores from microspore mother cell this is known as microsporogenesis so now the microspore mother cell which undergo meiosis meiotic division and it produce how many cells Four cells, four microspore, what we call it as microspore tetrad. What we call it as microspore tetrad. After some time, what will happen? This microspore tetrad undergo dehydration and the microspore, four microspores are released. 